Kuti and welcome to Max Financial Services Limited's Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amrit Singh, Chief Financial Officer, Max Financial Services Limited and Max Life Insurance Company Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the earnings call of Max Financial Services for the quarter ended June 2023. Uh, results have been made available on our website as well on the stock exchanges last evening. Uh, today I'm joined by Prashant Tipati, MD and CEO of Max Life Insurance. Uh, let me start with a recent development on Axis Bank transactions. We would like to inform you that pursuant to the approval of Max Financial and Max Life Boards, Axis Bank will be infusing rupees 1,612 crores by subscribing to equity shares of Max Life at fair market value determined basis DCF methodology. Axis Bank has already received requisite approvals from RBI for infusion of this capital into Max Life. Post subscription to the preferential issues of shares, Axis entity shall collectively hold 19.02% equity share capital of Max Life. Axis will also have an additional right to acquire 0.98% stake of Max Life from MFSL. The proposed transaction is subject to receipt of shareholders' approval and regulatory approvals from IRDI, PFRDA, and CCI. This capital infusion will help Max Life to support its future growth ambition and it will also help augment the capital position of Backslide, thereby improving our solvency margins. On the allotment of the said shares to capital, uh, said shares uh, to Access Bank, the shareholding held by Max Financial in Max Life will stand reduced to 80.98 from the current levels of 87%. The additional capital infusion by Access Bank in Max Life highlights their commitment towards building a stronger franchise. With this update, uh, I will request Prashant to share the key business developments during this quarter. Thank you, Amrit. Good morning, everyone. Let me just uh, try and give you updates around the strategic areas that we call out on, on our presentation. Uh, let me first begin with uh, what we are doing in distribution. As you know, we are trying to build a predictable, sustainable growth engine uh, by building a strong distribution network. And as a part of our ongoing effort to enhance our distribution capabilities, we successfully onboarded six new partners during the first quarter of FY24. Notably, we established partnership with South Indian Bank and five additional brokers and corporate agents. And in the following quarter, business from them will begin. We are working uh, in a very programmed manner to expedite and enhance our presence on those counters. In quarter one, our new business premium experienced a noteworthy 25% growth and total APE grew by 10%. Our prop channels achieved substantial growth with APE increasing by 23%. This growth was primarily driven by impressive performance in both online and offline proprietary channels. In the online space, our market leadership in protection products is maintained and we achieved successful market share expansion in the savings business also, resulting in a 44% growth in our e-commerce business. In the offline channels, uh, our proprietary channels demonstrated robust growth of 18%. The agency channel growth fueled by new agent activations and advisor recruitments. Furthermore, our direct channels, uh, their growth was attributable uh, due to the launch of new cross-sell channel and increased manpower. So overall, uh, in both online and offline space, we saw very robust growth. However, our bank channels AP experienced a 2% decline in quarter one. Looking ahead, we have planned series of significant investments in FY24 to bolster our proprietary channels, including the establishment of 100 new offices, among other initiatives, which have to be uh, established this year, and uh, we are working on, uh, on that initiative already. Overall, all our unwavering commitment remains to drive growth across diverse channels and reinforce our prominent position in the market. <clears throat> you would have seen from the July numbers, uh, which, uh, uh, the, uh, which were published yesterday, that the growth has further enhanced and uh, the momentum 
uh, is uh, has accelerated in the month of July. Uh, in the products area, to drive uh, margins, we are continuing our journey of innovation and our commitment to offering a wide range of choices to our customers. And we are very happy uh, that we introduced a new power design in the last quarter, which is called Swag Power. And uh, we saw remarkable success within just 30 days of its launch. This product not only enhanced our product suite, but also brought a fresh balance to our product mix in quarter one. You would have seen that the product mix has been rebalanced more in favor of power, uh, which was our desire. Furthermore, we have made adjustments to consumer benefits across our product categories, resulting in improved uh, outcomes for all the stakeholders. These efforts have contributed to a reasonable expansion on year-on-year -year new business margin, increasing by about 110 basis points from 21.1 in the first quarter of FY23 to 22.2 in the first quarter of FY24. And thus, it has given a 16% growth to, to our value of new business. Breaking down the individual APE basis uh, for FY24, our product mix comprised 20% 20, 20 participating, 41% non-participating savings products, 29% unit-linked insurance, and 10% protection products. Our strong belief in long-term potential protection and retirement opportunities has driven 36% growth in retail protection segment and 260% growth in the annuity segment during the first quarter of FY24. Additionally, Max Life Pension has achieved an impressive asset under management of approximately 293 crores as of June 30, 2023, and we are one of the fastest uh, growing in terms of asset built up uh, in the new uh, pension fund management companies which have been set up. Uh, for the customer, uh, which is our third element of strategy at Max Life, our unwavering commitment lies in providing our customers with significant value proposition and continuously striving to enhance their overall experience. Our best-in-class claims paid ratio of 99.51 in FY23 is a testimony to our focus towards customer obsession, and we are very proud that uh, uh, we have done a great job when the real moment of truth comes in the lives of our policyholders. During quarter one, FY24, uh, we also witnessed a one-point improvement in our overall company net promoter score, which has increased from 52 in March 2023 to 53 in June 2023. Moreover, Max Life proudly maintains his position as a market leader in terms of 13th month persistency for the number of policies. Uh, in terms of number of policies for 13th month, Max Life insurance is number one. Uh, it is number two in F 25th month persistency, and it is number three in 61st month persistency on number of policy basis. In specific term, uh, our 13th month persistency uh, in terms of regular premium stood at 84%, and our 61st month persistency was at 51 for the period ending June 2023. This progress actually highlights the trust and loyalty of our policyholders uh, for Max Life. The fourth element of our strategy, which is around digitization for efficiency and intelligence, our comprehensive digital sales transformation has been successfully integrated across all our channels. We fully launched the M Smart Sales Management and Activity Monitoring Tool for all the channels, aligning the revised processes with channel-specific metrics to drive tangi tangible business outcomes. We are making an attempt to make our sales channels more digitized, uh, more metricized, and uh, we are trying to uh, look at the choreography across all our channels and some of the success that, you, that we are seeing, in, especially in our property channels, are also because of the work that we have been doing in the, towards digitizing the sales monitoring process in our prop channels. To enrich the onboarding experience, business insurance is now enabled on our onboarding systems, facilitating a fully digitized application and issuance process. Furthermore, we have expedited the onboarding journey of the national pension system by integrating permanent retirement account number, uh, and we have introduced account aggregator as a valid surrogate for income documentation for salaried customers. In our pursuit of elevating customer service standards, we have introduced a seamless customer-driven journey through the digital living certification. Our commitment to improving services for non-resident Indians 
is evident through the implementation of FATCA and NEFT enablement on our website. A continuous effort to extend coverage for auto financial uh, underwriting within the self-employed segment. You incorporated an AI engine. This integration includes the utilization of financial surrogates uh, derived from bureau or third-party data and account aggregators. These initiatives underscore our uh, dedication to embracing digital transformation and harnessing cutting-edge technologies to deliver heightened experience for our valued customers, all this while enhancing operational efficiency. To summarize, we are working on successfully concluding a series of regulatory and operational steps to fructify the access, access transaction. In addition, our productive investment in proprietary channels will serve to reinforce our confidence in upcoming phase of growth. By every, every passing month, we have witnessed that the performance of the organization in terms of growth is increasing and we are very optimistic as well as confident about quarter two and for the rest of the year. Uh, with this, I'm going to hand it over to Amrit, who will provide an update on our financial performance. So moving on to the key financial metrics for quarter one, uh, consolidated revenue for MFSL, excluding investment income, was at Rs. 4,730 crores, a growth of 19% in quarter one. Consolidated PAT stands at 101 crores, which is up 48% uh, last year. Renewal premium for Max Life has grown by 15% to Rs. 3,014 crores. Gross premium has grown by 19% to Rs. 4,871 crores. Value of new business, as Prashant mentioned, for the period was at 247 crores versus 213 crores for last year, resulting a growth of 16%. The NBMs have improved to 22.2% as compared to 21.1% last year. Embedded value for Max Life as our end of 30th June 2023 stands at 16,938 crores, thereby an operating ROEV of 14%. Policyholder OPEX to GWP stands at 17.4%. Uh, Max Life's standalone profit is at Rs 103 crores, an improvement of 14%. Profit after tax is around 89 crores. The solvency ratio for Max Life stands at 188%, and AUM under management as on 30th June 2023 is 1.29 crores, a growth of 21%. To conclude, we remain confident in our ability to leverage and strength and deliver sustainable value to our shareholders and customers. We also remain committed to our purpose of inspiring people to increase value of their lives. We are now happy to take any questions that you may have, and I will now hand over to the moderator to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. We'll take the first question from the line of Avinash Singh from MK Global. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Good morning, Prasanthi and Amrit. A uh, great start of the year uh, to the year. Uh, two questions. The first one is like, uh, you know, the change of plan. Uh, so nearly, you know, uh, 1,600 for capital infusion. That kind of uh, increases your solvency margin to nearly, say, 230 odd percent. So, I mean, in this, sort, uh, of course, uh, this change of arrangement would have some thought process behind it. So if you can just sort of uh, provide some color of, on your growth plan, say, for over the next, three, four years, because this is a substantial, like 40% augmentation to your solvency margin. So what kind of a growth plan do you have in mind uh, over the three, four years? And secondly, if I uh, uh, go into, you know, the margins, of course, there have been marginal increase in protection, but all margins uh, continue to hold well. And in fact, uh, and uh, it has consistently come better than what sort of a typical you have guided. So you have tried to sort of a moderate margin expectation for quite some time. But in the end, margins have come better. So, I mean, what sort of a margin trajectory do you see, particularly once this activity is also consummated, 
where of course we are mindful of the fact that the excess is eventually paying more than what was the plan say that uh, the older plan so if at all there is some kind of a, you know change in the contours of the payout and all so if you can provide again a medium term guidance on the market part thank you Good morning, Avinash ji. Uh, like always, very sharp questions. Let me address them one by one. Uh, you're right. Our solvency margin is going to go up by 39%, uh, which will uh, which will give us good capital in the business, which is required for growth. Um, we have very aspirational plans for future, which we have been repeating again and again. Uh, we have specific plans to drive growth and uh, you know growth upwards of 20%. Uh, we have plans to become dominant in two areas, uh, protection as well as retirement, and within that, annuity. And as you know, these product categories uh, require capital because uh, the initial requirement of capital on both these products is uh, higher than the savings plans. Uh, for this to happen, we do require capital as a business, and uh, uh, we, uh, we actually raise this with our shareholders, and shareholders kindly agreed that rather than doing a secondary, this will be a primary where the capital will come to Max Life Insurance. It's really a positive step for our growth, and we are very optimistic that this capital which is coming to our business will be good for uh, for driving our growth for at least next 18 to 24 months, so that gives us good capital for growth. Uh, <clears throat> or coming to your second question, yes, uh, you know, why the margin is little higher than how it was last year, uh, I must highlight to you that this deal has no bearing on the operational performance of the organization. We are, uh, we already had a very aligned view on how we want to drive business. We are working to a plan. Uh, we uh, uh, we will continue to drive the business the way it was envisaged, and uh, uh, you know the guidance on margin actually stays, which I gave at the beginning of the year that we should look at margins for the full year lower than how it was last year. We have given guidance of between 27 to 28 percent. I also highlighted quite clearly that uh, at least for this year, there'll be bias towards driving growth as against maximizing the margin. We will, of course, be very mindful of the margin, but we are making investments in driving uh, prop channels. We are opening offices. We are buffering up capacity. We've deployed more people on, on bank assurance. We acquired many customers where we will be deploying our own people. So there's an all-round work taking place towards driving growth, and uh, hence, uh, you know, the guidance on margin actually stays. Uh, having said that, the attempt towards optimizing the margin will always be there. We will work towards, uh, you know, reaching the levels that uh, that is not negative or, po uh, or generally positive. So those will be the attempts, but for the time being, uh, my guidance actually stays. Uh, yeah, so quickly, just one uh, quick follow-up. Uh, so, I mean, of course, in the backdrop of also that March was abnormally high, uh, this 20% kind of, uh, you know, the growth guidance, does it hold for uh, this FY as well? Or like, because, I mean, this FY is coming from a different March base. So, this 20%, of course, growth guidance, medium term, I understand. Uh, for FY24, is, is it I mean, something different or like some adjustment? No, Avinaji, you're absolutely right. This 20% uh, growth target or growth aspiration is for medium term, which is about three to four years. Uh, however, uh, this year is, uh, in that sense, unusual because we have a very large March phase. Our attempt is to hit a double-digit kind of growth rate for the year, for the full year. And uh, by every passing month, we are getting more and more confident as the numbers improve. Uh, for this quarter, uh, which is, uh, you know, the quarter which is ongoing, our our target will be to hit a number which is plus 20%. Uh, we are reasonably confident we'll be able to do that. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Madhukar Ladda from Novama Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, uh, thank you for taking my question. So, uh, I think... I'll, uh, you know, uh, Avinash has asked uh, uh, most of the things that were on there, but Excuse just me, sir, uh, uh, one addition. Um, Hello? I request you to kindly use your handset, sir. And there is any disturbance on your line. Uh, is this better now? Yes, sir. Please continue. Thank you. Yeah, hi. So, uh, just wanted to get a sense of uh, how the access channel is doing, at least uh, first quarter. Uh, it seemed to be a uh, little subdued. So, 
uh, what are we seeing uh, from there and uh, what do you think should be our expectation for this year for the balance line months yes uh, your observation is correct and it is highlighted in our uh, representation also that uh, the growth from access channel for the quarter was subdued it was not on the account of we significantly losing counter share or anything like that the counter itself witnessed uh, slow growth or sluggish growth predominantly because we were dealing with a very large base effect uh, uh, as every month passes you will witness yourself that the performance on access channel will start to improve uh, i'm very optimistic that that uh, will start to happen starting this month uh, so we remain optimistic uh, access uh, contributes uh, at this point time anywhere between 51% to 56 57% of our sales and it is imperative that we do well on that counter having said that some of the changes that you see uh, which have been made yesterday uh, underscore uh, the commitment of access bank towards max life insurance and uh, its desire to drive the business up uh, we are very closely uh, now uh, uh, you know working alongside the management team of access bank we have uh, you know great support from them so i i remain absolutely optimistic about the growth prospects but yes <clears throat> for 3 4 months were a bit sluggish <clears throat> right and on the margins front so uh, you know if you look at it on a year over year basis uh annuity and non park share increase in the mix has been almost about 1100 basis points protection has also increased but still our margins have grown only about 150 basis points i know that the uh, that that we uh, you know expect to increase investments in in these channels in the bank in the proprietary channels but uh, i would have expected a slightly higher improvement in margin given such a big change in product mix so so your comments on that uh, uh, yeah i am i am because this is amrit uh, thanks for that question your observation is correct madhukar i think the mix has uh, improved and uh, you would have ex uh, expected a higher margin expansion but uh, there are two underlying factors uh, which is causing this uh, one is the new initiatives and all the new capacity that we have been installing over the last 6 to 8 months and given our reporting uh, mechanism is of actual cost and absolute cost for the quarter and the fact that this quarter is low on sales there is a drag which uh, that particular thing kind of creates on uh, overall margin profile and uh, uh, that's a fairly substantial drag there is an another element of the drag which is more to do with underlying variants and mixes uh, and also the curves movement uh, during the quarter uh, which has had some bearing on, on the margin profiles of each of the categories but we do we have taken pricing actions around correcting some of these things and that will get corrected and with respect to opex some part of that drag will remain and that's also the reason for us guiding a lower margin profile but as the year matures and you know uh, uh, sales volume picks up uh, the uh, operating leverage will play out got it uh, thank you uh, for the answers and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of prayesh jain from motilal oswal please go ahead hey hi amrit uh, uh, and uh, hi prashant uh, this firstly on this uh, a uh, non par bit uh, what is the kind of pricing action that you just alluded to that you would have taken with uh, you know uh, how what kind of action you would have taken in this quarter or post the or in uh, in 2q so far and also would like to understand on the same continuing on the non par piece as to what is the kind of demand on the ground and uh, the category of you know uh, 5 lakh plus uh, how has that changed in the uh, uh, the new tax regime that would be my first question hi prachar how are you doing uh, yeah. on your second question uh, uh, there is no impact that we have seen so far uh, with respect to the mix of greater than uh, 5 lakh business the traditional business which was impacted by tax regulations uh, that mix has remained largely similar to how it was uh, last year in the same quarter uh do these bases are smaller so but on that small base right now we haven't really seen any impact coming through which is material 
coming to the actions that we have taken and non pass these are generally uh, reduction in irr uh, of the products uh, which are in line with how the interest curves move so these actions are on those lines where uh, we have we have been correcting over the past now a few months actually uh, progressively uh, the irr making it more in line with the interest rate movements yeah. and uh, the other question was on the banka channel again you know Uh, while you mentioned that you haven't lost uh, uh, any uh, share on the Axis Bank front, uh, but you know how are the other banks uh, kind of your other partners performing, and how do you kind of see the ramp up uh, from the Banka channel going ahead? And uh, just uh, I'll just slip in one more uh, is on the protection bit, wherein you know uh, what's kind of driving the retail protection demand, and what kind of growth do you envisage for the full year? Right, I'll take that. On the banker front, uh, they, they are two. Our two largest counters uh, saw open architecture over last uh, 12 months, so 12 to 15 months. Uh, and uh, you know, mathematically speaking, that's why you saw our growth being impacted. But uh, in both our counters, large counters, Axis Bank and Yes Bank, the open architecture has stabilized. The number of players who had to come on the counter have come, and uh, uh, you know. hopefully from here on uh the growth that uh, the bank will achieve i think we will be able to mirror the growth so uh we we will we will witness good growth so it won't happen that the bank grows and we don't grow because open architecture has settled which is in a way very positive thing but of course it was a painful process over last 12 to 15 months that we had to go through uh we are acquiring new banks and i'm very optimistic about it so far we have signed up uh five small to medium size banks uh over last 7 to 8 months tamil nadu mercantile bank ujjwal small finance bank we signed up with bcb we have signed with capital sfb and we have signed up with south indian bank and uh, on two of the counters we have already started to work uh, we are seeing reasonable traction though the uh, sizes are small but i think these are relationships for future and as every quarter passes we will have more and more uh, share coming on those on them so i remain quite optimistic about our ability to grow at the same time we also signed up with 10 of the largest brokers uh, two or three large corporate agents there is there is big effort which is taking place towards securing more and more counters and hopefully through all of them you we will start to witness growth come through so uh, i think my narrative will be uh, the tough phase on banka seems to be coming to an end and i think Uh, with the momentum that we are seeing on the property channel with our banks firing uh, i think max life insurance performance on new sales will continuously improve uh, on your question on protection we saw 36 36% growth uh, this is better than how we were expecting at the beginning of the year uh, and it has two reasons to it i think uh, the biggest reason is base uh, during covid before covid uh, that entire phase uh, we saw good demand from customers and that was being driven by the pandemic Uh, once the pandemic got over that demand stabilized for a couple of years but starting this year we started to see that the demand has picked up uh, the search queries have gone up uh, the more and more numbers number of people are coming trying to buying protection so that's uh, the demand side also on supply side uh, we worked on uh, buffering of capacity in underwriting looking at which segments we want to work on Uh, renegotiating and onboarding a new reinsurance partner uh, some of the uh, flexibilities that we are seeking are available in terms of the sum assured that we can offer the 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 type of customers we could go to the number of cities that we could go to all that starting to help so there has been work on demand side or improvement on demand side as well as on supply side as a result of this it has picked up and it's not just max life we are seeing that across all industry uh, our brokers etc so overall good news and uh, uh, we are a prominent player in terms of uh, the penetration uh, we are number one as a percentage of sales we are number one uh, and uh, i am quite optimistic that this growth trajectory will continue to remain high as we traverse through the year thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sanket kodha from evander spark please go ahead uh yeah thank you for the opportunity uh, i have one simple basic question why access has stopped at 19 instead of 20 uh, 
uh, why why that optionality of not picking up to 20 in one go uh, any any reason we, uh, to to understand that point uh, why why one percentage of left over that's that's my first question and then i have two questions on on the operational side uh, maybe i'll ask afterwards I think uh, uh, the, the reason for that is uh, the approval that was sought uh, and the volume that was sought uh, of 612 crores and honestly whatever is the valuation that has come uh, so it's a it's a mathematical outcome so there was no intentional effort actually to uh, to keep it at 19 and not 20 so it was dependent on uh, the valuation and the valuation has come to whatever 113 rupees because of which the reverse solve is about 7% uh, Got it. So that's what they are going to take. The objective definitely is to go up to 20 as soon as possible. Uh, so we'll move in sequence, and there is uh, there is no agenda here, honestly. Got it. And, and so, so this one percentage will be more. Uh, definitely, one percentage will be more more like a primary again, or or, or it most likely will be a secondary one. It is expected to be secondary, not primary. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And and uh, and second question is is uh, is regarding uh, the opportunity size or or you internally might have assessed these new relationships South Indian Bank BCB UG1 or uh, Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank and, and new broker relationships what you have got into uh, uh, that means means internally you have, might have assessed uh, what this uh, size in AP terms could be uh, for you. So, so just wanted to understand uh, potentially means if it plays out as per your plan, uh, how much these relationships can contribute to your uh, top line. Uh, 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 and given given these all channels are open architecture channels, so, so, so just wanted to uh, uh, see uh, uh, understand the delta what you can expect coming from some new relationships. So th these are strategic relationships, and they built over a period of time. So honestly, uh, you know, I'm not giving any huge forecast about this year uh, in terms of how much sales they will deliver. Of course, the sales will be moderate this year, but I'm very optimistic that these are strategic partnerships and they will build over a period of time. So the next three to four years, all the new accounts, new banks, new brokers, uh, new corporate agents that we're signing up, uh, we will try to hit a four-digit number in terms of sales coming from them every year. Okay, uh, so so uh, so in, in three years, I can expect it to be closer to four odd percentage. Uh, that's, that's the way I should understand. Uh, so I okay. for your time. Okay, uh, uh, got yeah, it. Well, yeah, I mean close to six, seven percent. My sense. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. And 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 uh, and, and 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 the last one uh, is is uh, on two data keeping questions. Uh, one uh, one on that uh, AP uh, on EV. Uh, how much of uh, economic variance contributed to the 20% growth? Uh, that's point number one. Uh, or what is the economic variance number uh, sitting sitting in the EV part? And and second, on annuity part, uh, now the growth is very extraordinary. So so they just wanted to understand um, this is more driven by individual business or group business. Uh, uh, and and do you think that that number is sustainable? Because because if it is led by group, uh, how how lumpy it is in the current quarter. So on non-operating variance in the EV, uh, I think that was your first question. Uh, that's around 133 crores. Uh, economic variance, Amrit, sorry. Ah. Yeah, that's largely economic variance only, 133 crores. Oh, okay. And, and, and on annuity? Ah. Annuity, uh, uh, so look, I think uh, we have established a full reti retirement machinery, uh, which actually entails us now tapping into uh, corporates tapping into retail uh, individuals tapping into national pension system uh, uh, ecosystem and we use product chassis of individual annuities and group annuities right. uh, so uh, though the, the growth as from a categorization perspective is uh, driven by group annuities mm -hmm. but the reality is that it is actually very granular even in a corporate annuity kind of a program, you have to go and meet that individual or influence that individual who is retiring and whose superannuation corpus is now becoming available for annuity to be sold. So I would actually advise you to look at annuity collectively rather than segregating it into individual and group because it is not you know, that lumpy in its nature uh, because of uh, uh, the, the, the way we have kind of orchestrated ourselves. There will be certain deals which will come our way once in a while, which would be large in its size and uh, ticket. But that's, that's largely it. 
the, the reason I was asking this question, Amrit, was that uh, if it is more group annuity, the typically the product what you will be selling will be immediate annuity, which I believe will have a lower margin profile compared to a deferred one. Uh, so, 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 just wanted to understand uh, this group annuity is is what you do is better than the company average or 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 maybe at par or lower than the company average. So it is the the margin profile is slightly lower. You are right, uh, but I mean it's actually there's a need for the consumer. Various different tools are available to uh, sell for it. Uh, at the end of it, such a strong growth of 260 percent in AP that we have demonstrated is all VNB accretive, and anyway, this profile is also margin accretive. Got it. Uh, yeah. Uh, th- thanks. Thanks. That's it for my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Adarsh from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, Prashant and Amrit. The question is on uh, uh, when you look through uh, this particular uh, deal, right, that uh, Axis has got more uh, control in terms of appointing uh, board members. Now, um, how should, like, like, would you as management now be very comfortable with the fact that, uh, you know, markets been thinking of uh, wallet share losses further because you have more partnerships in access. So does this make you feel very comfortable about uh, wallet share now in access counters? Uh, Adesh, thank you very much and very good morning to you. I think uh, as management, we've been repeating multiple times that we have been very comfortable with access bank and how our counter share position will be. I've repeated multiple times that everybody should expect us more in the range of uh, between 65 to 70 percent or 70 percent plus minus a few points. Uh, so with this change, actually, it's not an additional comfort to, uh, to to management. I think it is an additional comfort to investors and analyst community uh, because you know we we always knew about it. Uh, but yes, you're right uh, with these changes, which are quite positive in nature. Uh, I, I think. Uh, Max Life Insurance is set up for growth, uh, is set up for uh, higher collaboration and better guidance and alignment with Axis Bank and its top leadership. And um, one more thing, uh, yeah, you know, I think somebody asked, but I don't know if it was unanswered, uh, was um, any change in economics, which we, except because when we were trying about this deal of giving a stake for a longer banker partnership, uh, it didn't involve, at least to start with, a payout of uh, so much by access, right? So is could there be any changes in payout which could affect margins for uh, Max Financials over a two- to three-year period? Do you envisage that? In the context of uh, what we are trying to build together and what Access Bank is going to participate in, uh, you know, these amounts are not quite material. And uh, this is a strategic investment for Access Bank in Max Life Insurance. So the answer to your question is no. Uh, we uh, we will continue as it is, and uh, uh, you know we will try to do the best uh, that we can. The, the value creation opportunity in this space, where we are indeed scratching the surface, and the franchise is really good. Access Bank saw value in coming at uh, the fair market value as against the discount that they were getting. Got it. And my last question is on protection, Prashant. You did mention part of the growth is aided by the base effect, right? Like uh, post-COVID, things have been slow. I uh, just wanted to understand now in terms of how uh, underwriters or uh, reinsurers are looking at it, um, do you get a sense that um, their thresholds of what they want to clear and underwrite, are that changing or just that people are getting used to higher threshold of what will pass as a uh, you know, as a file or something of that sort? I think as a country, and uh, not specifically COVID example, as a country, uh, the experience has evolved. And I think there's high level of alignment and understanding between the, the three uh, constituents, the reinsurers, uh, the life insurers, as well as customers. So the prices have increased in general. Uh, we have understood what kind of profile a mortality profile is going to come forward, and that has given a lot of comfort to reinsurers also. Uh, so they have been losing. I have noticed that in, on certain elements they have loosened, and it's uh, others finally uh, a trade-off between price and uh, and flexibility. So uh, uh, I will say better situation, better understanding, and that will go a long way in terms of driving growth for all the constituents. Perfect, Prashant. That's it, and uh, thanks and congrats. Uh on all the developments. Take care. All the best. Thank you. 
A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one now. We'll take the next question from the line of Nishin Savati from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, you know, the first one is, uh, you know, essentially on, uh, you know, your outlook on the, uh, the non-par business. You know, given the fact that you have repriced the product now, do you expect the, the momentum to continue? And hence, uh, do we expect the non-par share to remain at similar levels uh, towards the end of the year? Uh, thank you, Nishin. That's a great question. I mean, <clears throat> when we finished last year, of course, the bias towards non-par was, was higher, and we have made conscious efforts this year actually to rebalance. And uh, a lot many times the product mix uh, also gets driven by uh, the product of the season. So, for example, last quarter we launched a product which was uh, more in par space, and, of course, par gained ground. Uh, as we are moving through this quarter, we have a very strong ULIP plan as well as a non-power plan which was scheduled, which are scheduled to be launched. But on a long-term basis, Nishin, uh, we will attempt to be closer to 40%. Uh, that's our attempt. Uh, and, uh, you know, in terms of acceptance, yeah, I mean, this year the stock markets ran, so there is higher acceptance towards ULIP. But uh, uh, the category remains quite strong and uh, it has value. Uh, so. I'm not expecting that the demand for non-par is going to dwindle or the share will, will go down. We will try to be close at 40. Question in different words. Uh, you know, when we look at the VNB uh, kind of bridge uh, at the end of the year, would you have sort of a negative in the, uh, you know, in the business mix line item? If you could clarify what the question is, uh, Nishin. No, I mean to say that, you know, when we are looking at the uh, VNB uh, at the end of the year and you have kind of given a guidance for, uh, you know, kind of some compression in margins, then uh, would you see the new business line item, uh, the business mix line item contributing to it, or is it, uh, you know, anything else? No, it will be new business line, of course. No, no, I, I think, uh, uh, Nishin, your question is that will mix cause margin shrinkage? Uh, That's what I was trying to say, yes. Excluding the you know investments and uh, overruns. It will, it will, it will. Because uh, uh, non-par proportion of last year uh, is far high, was quite high given what happened in the last quarter. And also quarter three when we had a product launch around the non-par side. Uh, we will like to keep the non-par steady around 35% kind of levels for the year, 30-35% levels for the year. Whereas it was upwards of 40% plus uh, last year. Uh, this is non-pass savings, but protection and annuity are in addition to that. So, uh, but uh, from a shrinkage perspective of margin profile, there will be a mix and there will be cost both. Question is on your counter share in Access Bank. Uh, you know the other uh, bank assurance partner mentioned a high single digit growth at Access Bank. So, and I think I think we are in sort of flattish to minus uh, minus one or minus two. So is it something that there was a change in counter share during the quarter, or and uh, how how do we read on this? So it goes up or down actually, Nishin. Uh, in the uh, you know there was a particular month where we lost a bit of counter, but we regained. So like I mentioned to you, we should remain range bound between 70 plus minus two. That's the kind of number, and we are in that range. So there'll be months where you will see. Uh, other partner growing more than the bank, there'll be months where you'll see we growing uh, more than the more than the bank counter. Those possibilities do exist, but we are we are in range uh, in in the range. That's my question. Thank you very much, and all the best. Thank you, Nishin. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neeraj Toshniwal from UBS India. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, wanted to understand is there any change in strategy towards uh, credit life because it seems to be doing very well in this quarter. Yeah, I mean, of course, we are trying to acquire new partners. Uh, you know, there's high, reasonably high level of aggression as well as growth, and uh, more counters have been won. Uh, like I always mention, uh, the level of flexibility to drive the business in the context of changed guidelines and regulatory flexibilities have enhanced our uh, our ability as well as desire to be significant or reasonably significant players in this space. So we are we are pursuing this agenda uh, reasonably aggressively at this point, Neeraj. 
got it and one kind of uh, run rate we can expect similar run rate we can uh, uh, assume for the coming quarters or or we may yeah. be more regressive yeah, you should here. see growth you should see robust growth come through so we, we grew 29% in this category in the quarter and you should see further acceleration to this number got it and second would be in ulip i think uh, against the industry where peers have been phenomenally well in ulip i think we uh, are indeed because of probably a higher base uh, it's looking a little weaker so what is our strategy it's a conscious strategy to be lower in terms of ulip or we may see pick up here happening no we, we, we you will see pick up in this quarter actually there uh, like i mentioned to you earlier in the uh, in in my discussion that we are launching a new ulip design um, we are going to launch it uh, and uh, it will be present on e-commerce space on the banker space as well as agency <clears throat> however we are not going to uh, open it to uh, just about everybody we will be very selective about it and it will be given to people who are capable of selling so uh, the presence will be more on uh, with perhaps bank rms uh, with we with our top agents on perhaps the policy bazaar bazaar counters so those are areas where we will open you live selectively but you should see uh, you live uh, proportion increase as well as having its impact on our growth got it uh, one more question is on the uh, resources how many how many uh, people we have deployed at access bank before the loss of wallet and now how much uh, how many resources would be there if we can share that data uh, so uh, rather than giving you a, a number of resources let me say percentage we are 26% higher than last first quarter to this first quarter Okay, and uh, last question is on the timeline of the deal. Uh, when can we expect this deal to close, uh, and and any uh, further plans uh, and further update to uh, Anurji the uh, exit, uh, f which may happen? Because now, if uh, Axis would be in control, uh, uh, what is the rationale of him being on the board, or will he continue on the board? How do we think about it? So uh, on your uh, first question around timelines, uh, uh, the timelines that we are charging is anywhere between three to six months. Uh, this entails uh, we do intend to share out a postal ballot for the shareholders to approve, uh, subsequent and in parallel also uh, reach out to the regulators. This will require IRDI and now PFRDI as well because we have a, a pension fund subsidiary uh, where we are the sponsors and any change there also requires their approval. Uh, of the sponsor requires their approval and a CCI nod as well. So we are anticipating a time horizon between three to six months to conclude and complete this. With respect to uh, Anadhi Singh, who has been the founder, uh, chairman of this company, and then has built the franchise, he continues to be the chairman until uh, we indicate. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of. Prithvi Raj Saya from Agam Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, my original question was answered, so maybe I'll ask another one, a uh, simpler one on MPA. Uh, sir, maybe I request you to use your handset. Your voice is muffled. Uh, apologies. Uh, is it clear now? Thank you, sir. Please continue. Uh, hi. I wanted to ask, uh, in the NPS, uh, on, in the NP, in the annuity business, I wanted to understand where NPS stands. Uh, maybe currently it's not very meaningful, but in the larger scheme of things, how do you plan? Uh, how do you expect this to you know contribute to the annuity business? As I uh, indicated to you, we have now created a holistic retirement uh, team, uh, which actually is tapping into all the three ecosystems: the corporate uh, annuity market the individual annuity market and also being present in the national pension system annuity market. Uh, national pension system uh, uh, is, you know, there are maturing customers and obviously the maturing profile will only keep building up as time kind of goes by. Uh, you, would, you, do, you know that this uh, ecosystem was set up in 2004 and some bit of those retirees have started hitting in. Now we are quite present uh, with respect to uh, uh, at present, we are actually contributing, but you know, is it right now very meaningful? Uh, it's not very meaningful at the moment, but uh, definitely we expect this to become bigger and larger as time went progresses. Okay, thank you. Uh, another one on the state insurance, uh, uh, wherein you were alerted a couple of states as a lead insurer. Uh, can you quantify what will be the impact uh, 
what uh, we can expect out from this in terms of business. It is a bit premature actually to talk about the volume numbers, but we remain very optimistic and we are going to participate. The two states, uh, the largest of them is uh, is uh, Uttar Pradesh, which has been allocated to us. We are right now putting the plans in place, deploying resources, and uh, the big vehicles through which we will approach state insurance plan will be Bima Vistar as well as uh, PMJJBY. So those are two uh, products that we will be driving. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shreya Shivani from CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. I have a question on the new product, the Swag Power product that you have launched. So back in third quarter 22 also you had launched a new Power product which did quite well. And as far as I remember, that was also a higher margin and probably a longer term product is uh, is what I remember. So can you give some color about uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, color about the product? And also with these two new products, uh, can we now uh, say that your Power book book is effectively no longer the 10 to 12 percent margin book it's a higher margin book in case if swag is also a higher margin product so uh, we have we, we did launch this product in the month of june uh, swag par and as uh, was mentioned in the opening remark this product has done exceedingly well uh, uh, in its launch period and continuing until now uh, this product has uh, very similar to the principles of the non-par swag product that we had launched in quarter three of last financial year, has uh, many flexibility options with respect to payment terms, policy terms, income period starting, income uh, 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 bonus elements and guaranteed portion of the bonus elements, etc. So it's a, a, co a very comprehensive and a holistic product which has been very well accepted by both customers and distributors from our perspective. Uh, and has definitely augmented the power portfolio which MaxLife has been known for in the industry. Uh, is the margin profile of this product profile better? Yes, it is uh, better. Uh, it is better than the traditional power uh, products that we have been running. So fair to say that majority of in the future, majority of your power book will have uh, more non-traditional power policies which have a better margin profile, right? It will. I mean, there there is obviously other power designs also which continue to sell, but power portfolio should improve uh, at a aggregate basis on margins. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Motilal Uswal. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, just a question on a couple of regulations. Uh, firstly, on the expense of management uh, regulations, do you see any? changes in the commission payouts and what are your thoughts and uh, strategies to kind of, you know, uh, implement this regulation or take advantage of this regulation. Secondly, on IFRS implementation, there is talks about few of the insurance companies moving to IFRS from, uh, if I'm not wrong, from FI25 onwards. Uh, what are your thoughts and how, uh, how, how is your preparedness and what would be the implications on the numbers as in when it is implemented? Uh, expense of management. Expense of management. Uh, I thought, yeah. The expense of management actually is a, is a, it creates more flexibility. Uh, it uh, you know rather than looking at commissions, it focuses on uh, overall company expenses. So uh, there may be change of colors in terms of how we recognize expenses. Uh, however, at a total expense level of what we were incurring as expenses, I am not expecting any change to our expense profile, which means at a total commercial level, we are not going to incur any additional expenses. However, there will be reclasses which are possibility. Uh, on IFRS, uh, we are all chosen companies and we are working. Uh, we are working, I think, with Deloitte and KPMG uh, as our partner to be prepared. Uh, there is a core team which is working on it. There is a lot of push from the regulator to move to IFRS as soon as possible. Uh, we are one of the chosen companies who have to, uh, model companies who have to uh, go in the first tranche uh, of implementation, and we are very optimistic we will be able to conclude it uh, as time progresses. Great, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket Koda from Evander Spark. Please go ahead. 
thanks for the opportunity again uh, the last one i have is that uh, after after this uh, six months uh, the timeline for the current uh, access take increase approval uh, uh, when you will start that reverse merger process and expected timeline probably given you will need to take multiple approvals there also um, how much timeline uh, you believe will take uh, for for the entire thing to collapse and max life to become the listed entity Uh, so one step at a time is what i will say right now the entire focus and attention is going to be to consume this uh, this 7% and subsequently the 1% uh, once all that is done we will initiate the process uh, of doing it um, i think that will be a longer process so assuming that uh, we are able to do this transaction over 6 to 9 months you should expect a further period of our 18 22 24 months to do that Got it. Perfect. So, so basically, it's 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 from um, if I add up all the numbers, uh, all the months, maybe it's it's a two and a half year kind of a scenario to to uh, everything to consume it, right? Mm. You're right. You're right. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, and thank you ladies and gentlemen for being on our call uh, we look forward to more such interactions in future thank you thank you very much sir ladies and gentlemen on behalf of max financial services limited that concludes this conference we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you